Hello and welcome to the second part of creating a Ruby GM series on Localize. My name is Ilya and in the previous part of this series we have seen how to create the general structure of your Rails GM, how to define a GM spec, how to install dependencies and how to get started with uh, writing the actual code and today we are going to continue creating the Ruby gem and specifically we will take care of the testing suite you will learn how to set up RSpec, how to create Rails test dummy application, how to define and test generator tasks, and how to create and test rake tasks. And also we will integrate our code with Travis CI and CodeCov service. So if that sounds good, let's get started. So first of all, let's add some more development dependencies inside the GM spec file. Uh, specifically, CodeCov is an integration for the corresponding service, which will display test coverage results in a fancy way, and we will return to it later. Dot env allows us to set environment variables using the values inside a special file and in our case these variables will contain localized API token and the project ID. We will also employ a Rails to run our test dummy application. Then a rake can be used to run certain tasks. Our spec is going to be our TDD framework. Simple cov will allow us to measure code coverage and VCR is a tool to record interactions with the third-party services inside special files, which are called cassettes. Also, it can be used to replay those recorded interactions during subsequent test runs, and this is going to allow us to use a fixture data instead of sending a real API requests. Then don't forget to run bundle install and now we are going to create a dummy Rails application that will be used to test various features of your GM. This test dummy will reside inside the spec folder and uh, we should uh, create a bare minimum application. So we will not need features like action cable or action text or JavaScript and stuff like that. So use the following command to generate uh, this application and then proceed to the application RB file of this uh, new Rails app and remove the following line because, well, I would like to run the testing suite using both Rails 5 and 6. Also remove the gem file and gem file log because we will utilize our gem file inside the root of the, our project. Also open the boot RB file and replace its contents with the following. So this way we are utilizing our own gem file instead the gem file that was generated for us. Also we need to add a special gem for time zone information that should be loaded only on Windows and for JRuby users. Next we are going to start setting up our spec, therefore create a new file spec helper. Uh, it should contain the following. So first of all we are loading environment variables using .env and the contents for these variables will be hosted inside the .env file. Then we are starting to measure code coverage for our tests. Uh, next, if the testing suite runs on continuous integration service, then the coverage data should be sent to CodeCov service. Then we are loading support files from the spec support directory. Next, we are loading Rails dummy application using test environment. Then we load the environment RB file to actually boot this application. And then we are, we are setting the Rails root folder. Also, let's create an RSpec file inside the project root. This file is going to contain RSpec options 
specifically the test results should be printed in color the spec helper file should be loaded automatically the order of the tests is random and the formatting is doc documentation now let's create an env file with the following contents so those keys and values will be used to set your environment variables also make sure that this file is ignored inside git ignore file because you don't want to expose your api token obviously but what you can also do is you create can create an env sample file with uh, some sample contents and so developers will just copy paste this file as env and provide uh, their own api token next let's add uh, some rake tasks like this specifically we are going to add a spec task to run our spec and now we are ready to write some tests and well in the previous part we have provided some config options for our gm therefore let's make sure that it is possible to adjust these options therefore create a new file under this spec lib folder and name it localize rails spec dot rb and here we are going to make sure that when the config method is run, the localize Rails module is passed properly. Now you can change directory to the project root and run our spec dot, which is going to run all your tests. Next, I would like to add a couple of tests for the mandatory options. Those options are project ID and API token. And we need to make sure that these options can be provided using the corresponding writers. But I would like my tests to be isolated. So in other words, my tests should not change the real config, which we are going to load inside the test dummy application later. Therefore, I would like to take advantage of a class double and effectively we are going to create a fake class like this and now we can provide the test keys so we are expecting this fake class to receive a writer method with the proper argument and then we are calling this method and this test is going to pass only if this writer method is actually implemented and to avoid false positives let's make this test fail so open uh, your localized rails file and remove this project id accessor at all then save the file and run the tests and you are going to see that this test actually fails which is good because it well it works now let's uh, bring the project id back inside the localized rails rb file run our spec again and we are all green which is great now using the same approach you can add a test for the api token method so it works in the same way and we can take care of all other options once again we're going to use absolutely the same approach we're going to test the writers only for now so we could test readers but it's not actually mandatory because in other tests the readers are going to be tested implicitly therefore here i would like to test only the writers also you can see the test coverage percentage which is nice and to learn more about test coverage you can open the coverage index html file in your browser and you can see the detailed information line by line now let's take care of the installation task because well i expect uh, the users to create a special localized rails config file inside their rails applications and well of course it can be done manually but it's not very convenient so i would like to introduce a command like rails generate localized rails install or something like that and this command should create the config file for us therefore we can create a special generator so our generator will live under the lib folder so create 
a new generators directory, then localize Rails and a file called install generator.rb. So here is the code. And basically this code takes the template, localize Rails config from the templates directory. It copy pastes it to the config folder of the Rails app. And the target file will be named localize rails. Now let's create a new template inside the templates directory. So that's just the file that will be copied inside the user's application. And basically this is it. Now let's test this task. Therefore create a new file called install generator spec inside the spec lib generators localize rails. And our test case is going to be very simple because we need to make sure that running the given task results in creating the proper file. And so to run the task programmatically you can call the start method in the following way. And well, this config file is a helper. It is going to return path to localize Rails configuration file. And such methods usually live inside the support folder. Therefore, let's create a new file called file manager. And it is going to return a proper path. Also, don't forget to include uh, this module inside spec helper. And now you can run our spec command, observe the results, and make sure that localized rails is created inside your dummy application. Well, the problem is that we are not doing any cleanup after running this test, and so we need to remove the created config after these specs are executed. Therefore, let's add before and after hooks to remove the config. And remove config is also a helper method. So let's define it inside file manager. We're going to use file utils module and this remove file method. So don't forget to require file utils. And well, that's pretty much it. Next, we can proceed to the rake tasks and therefore create a new folder lib tasks. Inside, there is going to be a file called localize rails tasks dot rake. And here are our rake tasks. As you can see, they delegate all the job, all the work to other methods that we are going to define later. And so we also need to register those tasks before utilizing them. And so to do that, we need to create a railty. So that's basically a block of code that extends a rail score functionality. Therefore, inside a railty RB file, add the following uh, code. And don't forget to require this railty inside localize rails file. Also make sure that rails is defined. Now let's add uh, task definitions. So first of all, I would like to create a base class and our importer and exporter are going to inherit from this class. Next, as for the importer, I would like to just print this task complete message to standard output and return true. So that's uh, a very minimalistic approach for now. But currently I would like to make my tests path and that's that. We will take care of these methods later. Then create an exporter file. And, well, it is going to have uh, pretty much uh, the same contents. Uh, then don't forget to require those files inside localized Rails RB. And now let's test those rake tasks. Uh, the first step is to load those tasks inside the spec helper. Uh, then you can create a new file import task spec dot RB. So we should make sure that this task actually output the success message. 
so this can be tested using the following approach and well this expectation requires a callable object a lambda or a procedure and so to run a task programmatically you can use the following approach but well uh, this line of code is uh, quite complex uh, therefore let's create a new rake utils file inside the support directory with the following contents and so these methods will return callable objects don't forget to require uh, this module and then let's return to our uh, spec and so here is our test uh, the same can be done for the export task spec file so we are going to check the output uh, but one problem here is that our tasks try to load the config file inside the config directory therefore this config should be created before running those specs and therefore let's define a new method inside file manager it is called add config and it is going to just create a sample config file for our dummy application. Now let's tweak the spec helper RB to add the config. And also inside our install generator spec, let's add config after all tests are run. So first of all, we are cleaning up uh, the config created by this installation task. And then we are adding the config back. And this is it. So now you can say our spec dot and make sure that everything is working just great. Now let's see how to get started with uh, Travis. CI and so to get started you need to create a new repository on github or bitbucket or gitlab if you get the following error then make sure you have deleted the git directory for the dummy application because it's not needed then when you are ready go to traviscci.org sign in using github account uh, then click on your avatar here, choose settings, uh, then you can synchronize your account, then find your repository, enable it, then proceed to settings and set two environment variables localize the api token and localize project id now we need to create a new file travis yaml so we are saying that the language is ruby we would like to use three ruby versions to run the test and also i would like to use three different rails versions to run those tests and so to make it work properly update the gem spec in the following way so locally we are going to use rail 6 but on travis we are going to use different rails versions now let's navigate to codecof.io and sign in using your github account then find your repository open it and basically that's it so no additional configuration is needed here now we can get rolling so commit your changes push them to github then after pushing everything you can return to travis open the current tab and take a look at that our tests are run it will take some time so i'm going to pause the recording and i will get to you in a couple of minutes so we are back we are all green that's great you can click on the specific job uh, to see more information of what is happening and then you can proceed to code cove service here you can reload the page and you are going to see the co code coverage result also it is possible to see results for individual files by proceeding to the corresponding file so the results are very very detailed and before wrapping up let's see how to add some fancy looking badges to our readme so these badges are going to display test coverage and the, res and the results of the most recent test run so you should just add the following contents to readme.md file then you can commit your changes also note that i am saying skip ci 
so that Travis does not rerun all the tests again because we have not modified any code base. Now you can say git push, return to your repo and make sure that the pages are displayed. Great job! And basically that's it for today. We have done lots of modifications to our GM. Don't forget that the textual version of this video is available at localized blog. In the next part of this series we are going to finalize the creation of our gem. Therefore, see you really soon and until the next time.